Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today I'm here with a VR responding to a tag started by a good friend of mine, Manuela from Place of Stillness. The hashtag is Witchy Aesthetic. I'll have her original video and her channel linked down below. She is a wonderful human being and a great reader and astrologer, so I definitely recommend checking her out for all things related to, to spiritual practice, tarot, and astrology. I know I've also watched Hanny from Fierce and Pretty's response to this tag, so I'll leave that video linked down below as well. Both of them have informed the way that I think I'm going to respond to this tag, and both of theirs were really fun and amazing to watch. I personally have a very vested interest in aesthetics of all sorts, especially as they pertain to things like identity and spirituality, both of which are also very important to me, so this was like the perfect storm, the perfect uh, scenario of a tag to come about, and I'm really glad Manuela started it. I actually took notes and then realized I was probably really overthinking this, and I might go on a bunch of different tangents. There's not necessarily going to be a rhyme or a reason to the way I'm speaking about this topic, but I promise it will all come together in the end. So yeah, you can see, bunch of extraneous notes, totally unnecessary, and it was at the end of creating this that I realized I probably should just get started and start speaking. So uh, first I will say, that the name witchy aesthetic, although I'm responding to this tag, I don't necessarily think of myself in present day, present tense, as a witch. I think I've drifted away from that title and I've spoken about this before in recent years. I think the spiritual community and witchcraft for me felt very alluring and that was my gateway into a community, but the title doesn't sit quite right for me or with me. I don't mind being referred to as a witch, I don't mind being referred to any witch way, but I think if I had to give myself a title, which I wouldn't be too keen on doing, I'd pick something more along the lines of magical practitioner, uh, magical being, just magical human, uh, maybe something, I w honestly would probably feel even more comfortable with something like a magician type title. I think that my magical and spiritual practice is at its best right now actually, and it's because of the fact that I've been able to separate myself or identify myself in my own right, and for me, the title witch just didn't fit, and for plenty of people it does, so I guess I'll just start there. But uh, when it comes to witchy aesthetic and taking it into like a deeper level, I think I've made a video in the past on aesthetics as they pertain to spirituality and witchcraft, and I am always sharing my own practice and things that I'm doing as far as sacred spaces go, altars go, I've shown all of those sorts of things, and for me, my aesthetic is an extension of myself, so when I think of my spiritual practice, my interests, things that I'm drawn to in life, ideas and topics, all of that for me is very tied in and interwoven with the idea of aesthetic, uh, aesthetics, for me at least. So my personal style, and I think I will refer to my style as a way of self-identifying throughout this video, I started even with astrological placements and things within my chart that I've personally come across that I think help to explain or at least describe a bit of my style. Uh, I like to look to my Libra moon in my fifth house, for example, for those of you who know some astrology, fifth house being that house of expression, among many other things, but one of creativity and expression, outward expression. Libra being Venus ruled uh, is quite tied up in the idea of style, aesthetics, and um, appearances in some way, you might imagine. So I've got that there, and it's conjunct my Chiron, so I like to imagine that I need to express my inner emotions, my inner space outwardly, and that for me it's a form of healing. I also am a Gemini rising. I wrote this on this paper. I am going to go through it because I figure if I've written it down, I might as well do myself the, the honor of reading through it. But for me, certain rising signs bring to mind certain characteristics. For example, I think of Virgos in a lot of ways as healers and planners. I think of Taurus. When I think of a Taurus rising, I think of somebody who's very grounded and stable, who likes comforts in life. As a Gemini rising, I imagine 
in that specific placement, which does rule appearances in many ways, your rising sign, um, for it to be a bit of a chameleon or a mimic in some ways. Um, very mutable, of course, it's a mutable air sign, and it's opposed to my Sagittarius sun in the seventh house, so I like to think that's why I can be prone to extremes, which translates to my aesthetic, to my style, and my spiritual practice, and my personal life. Um, as far as my style and taste go, I've written a few descriptors down. I would consider myself a lot more of a maximalist than a minimalist. I actually had some comments now that I'm in this space remarking on the blank walls behind me. I'm not going for a minimalist aesthetic, it's just that I haven't found things to put on the wall when I'm in a space, for example, sacred space, spiritual space, and I imagine any of my personal spaces to be spiritual and sacred. I like to fill that space with my presence, and the way that I do that is through items that reflect my tastes and interests. So when I see a bare wall, I want to put something on it. So I am looking at prints to put along this wall. This is new. It's a wall fixture that I'm storing some tarot decks in actually at the moment, and this is my more workspace area. So I think it'll be great to have those on hand right there, and then I'm probably going to have prints that go along this wall here. So definitely more of a maximalist. I value and I love looking at minimalist styles. I find them very soothing and there's something calming about minimalism, but I personally jive with the chaos that comes with maximalism. I don't like a mess, like there to be a mess. I don't like for things to be dirty, but I do like for things to feel full and inhabited and that sort of cozy uh, style that comes with some of the maximalism with just having um, textures and furnitures and rich colors, all of that to me is is the way to go and even when I'm dressing I like you know wearing my rings my necklaces all of that plays into a sort of maximalist style that I think inhabits my spiritual space I'll have tons of crystals and figurines and bits and bobs and trinkets and ephemera that I think reflect my practice and that I can use as touchstones to check in with myself spiritually, to use as tools. I like tactile experiences as I'm working, so if I'm doing a spell, if I'm praying, if I'm meditating, having stones to hold, having little things that I can put as offering, different candles to light, just things that look nice. Um, I'm definitely more of a magpie when it comes to, to items. Shiny things attract me of all sorts, and actually my Patronus, if anybody takes those Harry Potter quizzes, is a magpie, so it stands to reason. I think that was an accurate assessment on their part. Um, I like warm tones and rich colors, woods, earth tones, neutrals. I gravitate towards a lot of black, earth tones, and neutrals. Generally cool, cool tones in terms of what I'm wearing, warm tones in terms of what's around me. I do find that light colors and vibrant colors tend to make me feel and look washed out. I personally think style is very much a way for me to express myself, to reflect how I'm feeling. I am always in my head, as you all know, I'm always reading novels. To me, life is like this big dream or story and we're all our own main characters. And I find that the way that I cultivate my style, one, has taken quite some time in getting to know myself through meditation, introspection, and spiritual discovery. That's how I've arrived at my personal style. And I think that that is separate from fashion. Style is, it can be permanent, it's not necessarily something that needs to change with time, whereas fashion is subject to trends, subject to lots of, I would say, objectivity, where style is a lot more subjective. And um, in developing my style, I tend to think of eras that I would inhabit, I would maybe categorize my style and aesthetic overall, my spiritual practice, my magical practice, and personal clothing as more of like a vintage look. I like to feel inspired by like academia and scholarly pursuits, not dark academia necessarily, but academia nonetheless, so that sort of preppy style. Uh, I like to always think of like late Victorian times and being in some sort of like study with a fireplace and books and maybe like an Earl Grey tea bergamot scent in in the air, maybe like a glass of whiskey or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I like to take inspiration from various time periods, just more so in an aesthetic sense. I wouldn't want to return to those times. We already have enough struggles in terms of um, sexism, racism, classism, and, you know, I like that we have penicillin at our disposal nowadays, so I'll just take the aesthetic and leave the rest. 
But that being said, I would say more of like a nondescript vintage style is the way I tend to go for things. I like to thrift a lot of my clothing and go to secondhand shops for a lot of my tools and items. And I'll go to Etsy for things that have been made by hand. For me, it's very it's quality over quantity in most senses. Although I do like, as I've said, I'm a maximalist. I do like a quantity of things, but if I have to choose, I'd rather buy one really well-made sort of like sustainable or secondhand item that I think is just super unique rather than buy 10 kind of just, you know, um, basic or average tools that I could get at like, you know, um, a store in that kind of way. So there's that. Um, I sort of made a, <laughs> um, what would this be? Like a spectrum or a scale for my style and how I define it. So you can see it here. I don't know how well it'll show up on camera might not even make sense, so I'll explain it. So, I was thinking of words to describe myself. I, there's this really cool TikTok account of a personal stylist, and she goes through some celebrities and picks three words to define their style and cites different images of them and outfits that they wear to um, basically talk about and exemplify the words that she's choosing. So, I would say on one far end of the spectrum is uh, an area of my style that I would consider chaotic and wild. That's one that's very experimental. It's where there might be more color than normal, where I'm trying something and might incorporate sort of like modern um, pieces, accessories in a way that's almost like anachronistic, where it's not really fitting with the, with the time period it's meant to be set in. Um, and yeah, that's one where you might just see very like strange silhouettes that also applies to my spiritual practice where I might put something that's totally out of place on my altar and love the fact that it seems to disrupt the space. Um, on the far end of the opposite end of that spectrum or that scale, I would put elegant or ethereal. Sometimes I try to or like to inhabit that end of things. That's where there's this sort of like um, everything feels very cohesive and light. There's an elegance. There's more of like this willowy, billowy... Um, I would say like feeling to like the silhouettes and the fabrics would be softer um, textures in terms of like tools and in my spiritual practice that would be where more of like the angelic side of things comes into play the chaotic and wild being more of like chaos magic and very impromptu eclectic styles um, that being said the area that I would say um, marries the two where I can reconcile the elegant and ethereal with the chaotic and wild would be eccentric and eclectic. And I think I inhabit that space most often. That's my happy medium. I would say what I look like today, would I would put in that category of eclectic and eccentric. Um, I'd be so happy to be an old man that's considered eccentric and eclectic with a house full of bits and bobs and trinkets that all have a story and some history that people feel very drawn to and that like there's this sort of inviting but mysterious warmth to my spaces, to my presence, to the way that I go about living life. Um, that's my goal anyway. And offshoots of, um, of this spectrum included um, between eccentric and eclectic, I put scholarly and urbane a little bit more refined when I'm going for that, you know, sweater vests and um, slacks. I would say when it comes to clothing, when it comes to spaces, when it comes to magic, I like to allow a lot of freedom and room in clothing that relates maybe to um, oversized items rather than having fitted. I will usually choose oversized or regular fit over something that is fitted. I don't really like fitted things, tight things. Um, in my magical practice, it's very much, I need room. I don't want to ever feel boxed in by something, which yes, I might consider myself a magician or a magical practitioner, but ceremonial magic for me is too confining. It's too stringent and strict. So I find myself taking inspiration from a lot of ceremonial aspects, paying attention to esoteric and occult associations and um, things like that, but not necessarily following things to a T and really just sort of haphazardly grafting different sorts of practices and steps together to comprise maybe a ceremony or ritual that works for me. And it is a little bit, yeah, like I said, haphazard, but it works for me. So, uh, but I like reading. I like reading those 
ritual, very uh, strict ceremonial magic type rites and, and ceremonies, but performing them myself is more of a no-go. But I would say I don't necessarily fall into that very intuitive, eclectic, natural witchcraft either. I don't have a green th uh, thumb for the life of me. You're not going to see plants all around me or, or me with this like thriving garden or house plants. I kill most things. I try, I try my hardest. I like to take inspiration from nature around me and go out walking, but both in my more mundane and practical life and in my magical world, I'm not much of an herbalist or a green witch. So that folky side of things, not as much. If I'm going to go a little bit more for that witchy style that's very intuitive, it's going to involve more of the aesthetic that comes with ceremonial magic, if that makes sense. Um, what else do I have? I have such random things here, like a preference for natural and ambient light. I hate overhead lighting. I hate fluorescent lighting. Can't stand it. And lighting for me in spaces, especially sacred spaces, is key. If there's fluorescent lighting, I'm going to get a headache. Overhead lighting throws me off. It just does not feel right. I can't focus. Soft ambient lighting, usually warm lighting that's on the yellow toned spectrum is great. Candle lighting is amazing. Natural light through windows is amazing as long as it's not super harsh and direct. Uh, but overhead and fluorescent and those, I think, is it LED bulbs that sort of just have that really harsh look to them and the light that they give off? I can't stand it. And yeah, lamps and ambient lighting is going to be my my go-to along with candles, and I prefer dim lighting over uh, bright lights for sure. Um, equal form and function. It's my opinion as a maximalist that I should never have to compromise my form for my function. I compromise, I'm willing to compromise in plenty of areas of life, but I will go above and beyond to ensure that I get the form that I want with the function that it that I think I deserve. Um, so something, if something looks nice, in my opinion, I'm going to make it work well. If something works really well, I'm going to find a way to make it look nice. Um, and yeah, that's just that. But I am a bit chaotic. Things can get out of hand and my mind can get ahead of me. And the reality of things might not be able, it might not be feasible, I should say, uh, to create what my imagination concocts. I would put that more in the camp of people like my sister, who have a Virgo rising and a Taurus moon, very practical, but still very keyed in to aesthetics, I like to think, uh, that people with Virgo and Taurus, maybe Cancer and Libra as well, big uh, emphasis on those in their charter and their big three are going to be great event planners and just people with great style overall or interior design skill. Um, for me, with the amount of air and fire in the big three, it's more chaotic and less practical, more imagina imaginative, and then very, um, yeah, there's just not always a way to take what I'm thinking and make it a reality. So I need maybe somebody who's a little bit more grounded for things of that nature. Uh, what else have I written? Yeah, I took like different time periods. I prefer I like my jewelry at all. Everything to me has meaning and purpose when I'm going out into the world. I've decided very specifically, I am very particular, which is why a lot of people don't like to shop for me or they prefer for me to offer very specific suggestions if they do, if that kind of thing arises um, in terms of accessories and what I'm wearing. It, there's not always exactly a reason. It's more of a feeling than anything. And also this, I will say, all translates into my tarot practice. Um, I like decks that are abstract, that have an emphasis on art, so they might fall more into that art deck category. I like the occult, like I've said, I associate myself and would call myself more of a magical practitioner or magician. So that's, you know, the Toth is perfect, the aesthetic fits, it has this sort of vintage old school um, tone to it. It is colorful, but in a way that I think is tasteful rather than tacky or gaudy. Tacky and gaudy being highly subjective as well. This is not me saying that because you like colorful things, I imagine your style to be just that. Um, I pulled out the Ad, the Ad Orbita Tarot. Such a, a nice aesthetic deck. I, I much prefer off-white compared to stark white. So I love this sort of like emphasis on like the parchment colors. I like decks that are pip style and minimal. It, not minimal, but I don't like figures. I don't like for there to be a scene that guides me. I want to be able to imagine myself in something rather than it already being full of somebody else's something, if that makes sense. So the way I said I like to fill a sacred space with myself, with my essence. Um, 
I want to be able to feel like I can inhabit the tarot cards. And if I see figures and a scene that's fully populated with things happening, how am I supposed to fit into a dynamic that's already at play? I guess that's part of why I feel that way or, or direct myself in that way. Um, I like abstract decks, mostly because I think in my head, it's a place of ideas, it's a place of the fantastical, and I like cards that reflect that, where there isn't necessarily any grounded reality in the images that I'm seeing, and that it meshes with my mind better. There's less of a translation going on, and it's already speaking my mental and, uh, yeah, my sort of like cognitive, imaginative language if it's abstract and um, if there isn't something super literal or scenic going on. Um, not scenic, but highly illustrative with people or figures in it. Um, I pulled out random examples of just things. I pulled out that deck. I pulled out the tarot as color, which I've also been loving and feeling inspired by in terms of creating my space and seeking out colors based on this. I love how it follows that more traditional color scale. Um, I think the color scale in esoteric sense is so fascinating to me in terms of uh, the Golden Dawn and Toth looking at what colors are attributed to certain um, deacons and zodiac signs and um, just with certain associations. I think this deck is stunning. It's a very usable art deck in my opinion. It's quite abstract. It's just I almost like to pick out outfits that mirror these colors sometimes if I pull one of these as my card for the day. Something like that I think is wonderful. Um, my closet is a mess and I love it that way. I like having options. I like thrifting things. I like putting together different looks and wearing things in different ways. And I like to dress up just for myself, even if I'm not leaving the house. The same goes for my spiritual practice. It's for me, it's not for anybody else. And I might spend so much time creating something that looks beautiful just for only me to see it. It's only for my eyes and that that's fine with me. Sometimes I feel comfortable sharing things, but I would say by and large with a lot of meaningful things, I am more private or if there's a deeper meaning to something, I might showcase a, a version of it. I might showcase the artifice without fully divulging the, the inner workings or the deeper meaning behind something. And for me, that's like a nice little secret I get to keep just for, for myself or between me and myself. Um, that goes with my magical workings as well. I might share the types of things I'm doing, but the actual process I'm going to reserve just for myself. I might divulge a little bit more to, to close friends and people who I am yeah, friends with. But other than that, it gets to stay with me. I like a sort of air of mystery. I like, yeah, and I like learning about other people's aesthetics and styles and their magical practices. So hearing, for example, people with very distinctive styles like Hani and Manuela seeing how they interact with the witchy aesthetic. I think there's a depth. I think there's so much behind the aesthetics that it's a shame it has a reputation for being so superficial. I can see why, given current trends and the, the rise in popularity of witchcraft and maybe perhaps the, the surface level aspect getting a little bit ahead of the substance in, in up and coming practitioners. Uh, but I do think there is so much to aesthetics in the way that you can incorporate it and use it in a very substantial way um, to bolster and enhance your practice, to um, exemplify who you want to be and who you are. I don't think you necessarily need to have a very developed sense of personal style to self-identify through aesthetics, but I do think that for me personally, my personal style that I've cultivated has been a very healing experience, one where I've gotten to know myself, and I feel most myself when I allow myself to do and be what feels right. Um, I even remember growing up and starting to wear like sort of funky outfits and just things that I like to wear and getting like interesting remarks, but um, yeah, I'm totally fine with that. And for the most part, I have very supportive people around me that love that I like to try things out. And I'm surrounded by people with very unique tastes and styles and habits of their own that I like to learn about and know about and learn from. Uh, so I feel very fortunate. I think we live in awesome times when there is the prevalence of social media, which, you know, of course has its downsides, but we get to kind of take a little, we get to peer into some of the 
the visible life, the visible life that's been curated by others for us to feel inspired by, for us to feel a sense of community and um, belonging where we might not otherwise. And so I think the witchy aesthetic, I want to reclaim it in a way that feels deep and powerful, one that is not shamed or um, overlooked or belittled. Um, personally, I think aesthetic in a spiritual sense is it is its own form of magic, as many of us know with glamour magic. Uh, I don't want to ramble on too long and just prattle away. I'm trying to see if there was anything that else that I wanted to mention. I think I came full circle with that. I want to say that I did. Uh, if I if others have responded to this tag and I haven't seen their videos, I might. Uh, the hashtag should be underneath the title of this, so click that if you want to watch other people's as well. And if you're out there and you make videos and you like making videos, I would love to see a response. So yeah, all of that being said, let me know about your own aesthetic and how you've cultivated it, what it's like, if it's a witchy aesthetic and what that even means to you, because that in and of itself can go in many directions and be defined in many different ways. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this, this fun little chat and like and subscribe if this was fun or interesting. Until next time, bye.